Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, sorry it's been a bit since the last one. Was kind of busy last week and just could not find the time to get videos up. Um, but can't be apologizing too much. Just gotta do better. So anyways, we're back at it. I'm gonna do a quick one about output parsers. Um, it's just something I'm starting to take a look at more and more again with one of the projects I'm currently working on. Uh, the idea is like we are able to have LLMs transform data or like format in a certain way, but it's not always the most reliable. So there are a few different methods of putting out LLM output in a structured format so you know what you are going to get. So you get the expected data structure you want. So let's say like in this example, um, I'm getting leads or I'm looking up companies and I want to put those in you know a in json format where it's like an, a list of companies and a list of leads because i'm going to pass that into another function well i want to be pretty pretty sure that i'm going to be getting that from the llm so in this example uh, we don't need guardrails for this uh <clears throat> i was looking at guardrails but that's not the point of the video maybe in a future one but we'll just jump right into it uh i'm gonna need a pip install I have loaded my OpenAI API key into my environment. And for this video, I'm gonna be using the structured output parser and the response schema. So this is not the strongest. I believe there's other ones like Pydantic validators, um, but this one was, I guess, I think it's probably an easy one to just start with. So we're gonna need that in the response schema, and I will be showing you how to do this with chat models and regular uh, large language models. So import that. And now we're getting to our response schema. Maybe if I zoom in a bit, you can see that better. There we go. <clears throat> so the response schema is pretty simple. Like you just have, we are just using the response schema class and defining a name. So the name is like the key and then a description. So this is like what we're passing to the LLM is here's what we want in the response. Leads, list of contact information, object with emails, names and employers. Next thing we want is organizations, which is another list of company objects that have keys of company name, industry and size. So once we've defined our response schema, we can put it into the output parser by saying output parse equals structured output parser that from response schemas, put in the response schemas. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the format instructions. And this is important because this is how your language model will know how to format it. So uh, right here, we are getting the format instructions from the output parser by calling dot get format instructions. And now in the prompt template, you'll notice we have this template that says answer the user's question as best as possible with the format instructions and the question, the input variables being the question, and partial variables is, they're, they're used when you're expecting uh, another input variable at a different time in your steps, so you don't need to like make the prompt all at once. A pretty cool feature, just kind of making the prompt more flexible um, for you to manipulate as you're going through the steps. So right now we're just putting in the format instructions because that's one of the variables that we want. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to make our model temperature zero. Obviously, you know, you just want to be as deterministic as possible when you're trying to get structured data. We're not trying to put the temperature all the way up to one and get a poetry uh, or get a poem about how amazing the list of leads is or something crazy like that. Not saying it's going to do that, but, um, but anyways, next thing is we're getting input. So we're, we're formatting it from the so we're saying prompt that format prompt and we're passing question because you'll notice we didn't pass in the question up above so we're just putting it here and i'm just saying for the sake of this example come up with fake leads in their company and boom you'll see right here we have the list leads which is a list of contact objects that have name email and employer that is what we described up above in the response schema with emails, names, and employers. 
And we also have organizations, which is the other key. And we're getting a list of company objects of name, industry, and size. So boom, uh, that is pretty much how you do it. I'm just gonna quickly go over how to do it with chat models, more just so you guys know how to do it. Um, Cause I've been finding that personally, I've been using the chat open AI uh, wrapper with GPT 3.5 turbo because it's faster. Uh, and I found it to be a bit better, at least personally for me and how I'm prompting it uh, to follow instructions better. But uh, yeah, I don't know, just kind of got used to using it more. Um, but anyways, this is essentially the same kind of thing. We're gonna put in the same question. Ooh. Yeah, see, we're for, we're for chat models, we're doing chat prompt template, messages, human message prompt template, you already know, from template, and there's the template. Uh, input variables again, we got the partial variable, format instructions, we're using the same one as we did above, we're just not putting it down here, because uh, it's all one thing. We're going to call this bad boy, and we're just going to call the parse as well, just so <coughs> it's... Just kind of goes one after another, like boom, boom. Come on. Boom. So, yeah, it did the same thing. It's very... See, so, uh, yeah, I guess just to wrap it up, uh, you could think of a lot of cool different just use cases you want to use this for, whether, uh, you know, maybe you're running some sort of API and you only want to take natural language requests and then have some functions to like translate that into, you know, an object of a payload of like what, what you're supposed to be doing or something like that. Uh, something that you can like manipulate a bit more with like the expected values you want. Uh, maybe you have like a client and you want to clean their data. So you're saying, all right, here, take all this, all this stuff, all this information, and here's the response schema. Here's what we want. Boom, 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 boom. And then just save it to like, uh, the, like your database of choice. Um, so yeah, I think this is a really cool, definitely check out the other output parsers. I'll drop a link in the description below for the output parsers on Langchain. Uh, I'm also going to shout out guardrails. That's something I'm looking at. So I'm going to put that in the description as well, just for you guys to look at it. I think it's pretty cool what they're doing. Uh, still trying to wrap my head around it. That's like something that's been on the periphery of my explorations, but I do think getting uh, getting a grasp of like what tools are out there for uh, output that is structured from LLMs is gonna be super important because you need those cinch points, like input to the LLM, all this stuff happens. We want a very sure cinch point to then pass that information along to like a next function or else it's like, what's the point? Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, apologies to anyone who's watching these. If you expected, you know, the twice a week, like I've been doing, um, yeah, apologies for that. Other than that, drop a comment below, drop a like, uh, hate comments appreciated. Yeah. Join the discord Friday lunch and, uh, yeah, there's no outro. So goodbye.